Today we're talking Nick Hoffman back in Victory Lane, the High Limit Sprint Cars at Wayne County, and this week is Dirt Tracker's third birthday. Let's go. It's Tuesday, September 27th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. It was a little more than three weeks ago that modified racer Nick Hoffman, along with his dad Daryl and crew guy Mason, were involved in a highway incident that left all three hurt, including Hoffman with head injuries and his dad with a broken back. The crash with their toter home occurred in Kentucky as they were on their way to race three nights in Illinois at Farmer City, Fairbury, and Spoon River. The Hoffman spent several days in the hospital, including some time in the ICU, but all three, including Mason, have since returned home to heal. And you figured as soon as he was able, Nick would be back behind the wheel, especially after he tweeted just a few days post-crash that he'd ask doctors if he could race the following weekend, and they of course told him no. But over this past weekend, Hoffman did get back to racing, which was a victory in and of itself. He went to Peoria to take on the Mike Chastain Memorial, and in true Nick Hoffman fashion, just went ahead and swept the night. He went quick time and qualifying, won his heat, and took down the $4,000 win over Alan Weiser. Hoffman posted to Instagram on Sunday some photos of the crash truck and of his car after the win. He said he'll still need some work to get his jaw fixed, but that his head feels good and he doesn't have any concussion symptoms. It's pretty wild to see the photos of the toter and know how crazy things were there for a few days and think that Nick is already back to racing and to winning. And I'm sure he isn't done yet for the year. Hoffman is currently fourth in the UMP modified at national standings behind Mike Harrison, Derek Losh, and Tyler Nicely. Uh, and he has an incredible 22 wins in 33 races. A great story there for Nick and his family. All right, I know we are getting a little bit later into the season, but there's still quite a bit of dirt racing happening this week. And things start actually tonight with the High Limit Sprint Car Series at Wayne County Speedway in Ohio. The second High Limit show was added just a few weeks back, and they are calling this one Sheldon Hoddenshield's High Limit Buckeye Brawl. The race was originally $22,000 to win, but it has been boosted to $32,000 to win by the Durst family. It also pays $1,000 to start. If you aren't aware, uh, the High Limit Series is owned by Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet and will be like kind of like the sprint car version of the Flow Racing Night in America Late Model Series. Things will get going for real in 2023, but they are doing a few shows this year to get things rolling. They debuted back on August 16th at Lincoln Park Speedway, where Buddy Kofoid was the winner over Justin Sanders and Corey Eliason. Just like tonight, big money, midweek shows will be the name of the game. It sounds like they'll have a pretty big field tonight, maybe north of 40 cars in attendance. Remember that no outlaw drivers will be allowed to run, but the field will still be stacked. Expect names like Kyle Larson, Tyler Courtney, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Ryan Timms, Aaron Reitzel, Justin Peck, Justin Sanders, Buddy Kofoid, Cole Macedo, Rico Abreu, Brian Brown, Gio Selzy, Anthony Macri, and a whole lot more. Wayne County is not a regular stop for the Outlaws with just one race in the past six seasons. It is on the All-Star schedule, though, so we can get a good idea of who might be fast tonight. Justin Peck and Hunter Scherenberg already have wins there this season, and other past winners uh, include Kyle Larson, Cap Henry, Buddy Kofoid, and Aaron Reitzel. The top five drivers and average finish in those all-star shows are Larson, Rico, Kale Thomas, Henry, and Zeb Wise. And if I remember correctly, the format should be similar to what the Outlaws use. They will qualify, then run heats lined up straight up by qualifying. Uh, when with 35 cars like they had at Lincoln Park, they took five from the heats to the feature uh, with the top two going to the dash. They then transferred four from the Knights B main. If they do get into the 40s tonight, they may also run a C main. If you're headed to the track, uh, Grandstand's open today at 4 p.m. Hot laps are scheduled for 615. It doesn't appear as though there's any support division tonight, so the program should move along pretty quickly. If you want to watch it live from the couch, you can do that over on Flow Racing. In some other sprint car shenanigans today, it appears as though Jimmy Johnson is getting some laps in Alex Bowman's sprint car. Jimmy announced this week that he will not continue racing full-time in 2023. Uh, he had been running full-time with the IndyCar series the last couple of seasons, uh, but he's instead going to go the Brent Marks, Jonathan Davenport pick and choose route. And I guess maybe some sports car stuff, heard maybe Le Mans, uh, maybe the Indy 500 as well uh, could be on his schedule for the next season. Bowman posted a photo of Jimmy in the car at what appears to be Carolina Speedway here near Charlotte. Uh, it would be pretty cool to see Jimmy make some dirt racing starts. I know Chili Bowl has been talked about, and obviously, you know, Sprint Car here might be in play. 
I actually waited to record today's show until the tweet dropped just in case something crazy was happening, like maybe Jimmy running tonight at Wayne County. That's not happening. Uh, the car uh, appears to be in North Carolina. Uh, but cool story. Uh, nonetheless, hopefully we get to see Jimmy do some stuff soon. Uh, things got real reckless with the iRacing World of Outlaws late models last night at the vir uh, virtual Volusia Speedway Park. We're in the final stretch and Evan C is headed to the championship, but there are still some things to decide, including the relegation drivers and the race wins. C has been able to pull away from his teammate Blake Majulis in recent weeks, and Majulis was again playing catch up last night, having to fight his way uh, into the feature from a B main yet again. C started second and chased pole setter Damian Kiefer in the early stages. And Kendall Tucker started on row two. He actually got into the mix as well. He took the lead on lap 17. And then things settled out for a while, but then it got real crazy late. Tucker and C battled pretty hard in the closing laps. There were sliders, there was some contact, but eventually C was able to get the lead away from Tucker. On the final lap, Tucker used C up down the backstretch and got back out front. There was contact. C uh, didn't get wrecked, but Tucker had, uh, had him crossed up quite a bit. Then in the final two corners, C went full send, wiped Tucker out coming to the checkered. And a hard-charging Majulis tried to steal the win, but C was able to beat him back to the line by seven thousandths of a second. It was a wild sequence, and one that I think probably deserved a second look from the officials. I get that C was mad for being used up, but he didn't even try to hide his intent into that final corner. Either way, C will still win the title, and the series is headed to the dirt track at Charlotte next Monday night for the finale. You can watch it live at 9 p.m. Eastern for free on YouTube and over on Dirt Vision. Uh, before we shut it down for the day, I try and keep you guys updated periodically on kind of the progress of this Dirt Tracker project as we go along. And it was this week, three years ago, that I launched Dirt Tracker with just the website uh, and even in a smaller form than what we have with DirtTracker.com today. This whole thing started out as my final project for a computer science class and obviously has since grown a, a lot since then. At this point, with as strongly as the show has been growing, the website has almost become secondary at this point. It still does about 2,000 visits a week, uh, still my main resource, uh, resource for show research as well. And the analytics section of DirtTracker.com continues to grow as we now track eight series, one special event, and one racetrack's special events. The special event obviously being the Chili Bowl and the racetrack being Eldora. As of today, there are 1,336 races in the database, along with thousands of driver pages, all the stats you can handle uh, as well. And that includes the premium Dirt Tracker Plus service uh, that actually has a lot of subscribers, honestly, more than I thought it would have. And as for these shows, we are closing in on 9,000 YouTube subscribers, and we've got probably another 2,000 who subscribe to the podcast across platforms, whether that's Spotify or Apple Podcasts or the others. We've now done 659 daily episodes as of today and another 64 conversation shows. And this month of September has blown any previous month's plays and views completely out of the water. If you pay attention to the YouTube channel and you, you can go on and see just uh, you know the dramatic jump we've had in views lately. Uh, and we're still several days to go uh, still in this month. We're already at nearly 230,000 plays and views for the month. That's nearly 60,000 more than any previous month we've had before. And we've had almost 100,000 individual people tune into an episode over the past three plus weeks. That's absolutely insane. Uh, for the show total, we're now uh, at over 2.1 total million plays, uh, 2.1 million total plays, excuse me, for the life of the show, uh, with 1.2 million of those happening just this year. The growth just keeps on going, and it's super incredible to have all of you tuned in regularly. I had someone ask me recently if I accepted sponsors and partners for Dirt Tracker. And the answer is, of course, yes, I'm not actively pursuing anything like that. And I don't normally talk about this publicly, but if you or someone you know is interested in getting involved here, I'm certainly always open to talk. Uh, you can catch me in my DMs or you can email me at info at dirttracker.com. So three years in, hopefully many more to come. I appreciate everyone that has come along for the journey so far, whether you tune in, whether you've bought some merch, whether you're a Dirt Tracker Plus member, uh, just glad to have you with me. Uh, there are two items on the streaming schedule today, both of them on Flow Racing. There is the aforementioned High Limit Series uh, show on Wayne uh, at Wayne County, uh, plus Flow 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Tuesday. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the show if you don't already. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.